Let me ask you about the shoplifting charge. How did that happen? Like, why were you, why were you I shoplifting? Pizzas. I tried to also steal a DVD, a Kiss DVD and a South Park DVD. And let me tell you about stealing from big box corporations like Target and Walmart. There is a lawyer in Orlando, it's called the Palmer Recovery Group. And if you steal and you get caught, not, not only whether you get arrested or not doesn't matter, when you have to sign a paper, they don't release you from the store. So the loss prevention gets your name and address and sends it to the lawyer. Guess what? You're paying something called a civil remedy. That means for the time that the object was off the shelf, that you took it off the shelf and it was unavailable for sale, you kept the store from making money. So the lawyer gets the money that way for the company. They make a lot of money for each 10 shoplifters to get away. That one shoplifter lifter that does get caught, guess what? You're paying the Palmer Recovery Group. $300. And if you blow it off the next month, it's $475 and so on. They'll sue you. They'll ruin your credit over that. I have good credit. So you know what? I paid them as soon as they said, Hey, you, you owe us money. And I wrote an apology letter. I said, you know what? I could see it's great that they, that these companies have somebody like you to protect them from thieves because I'm just like somebody who stole out of desperation, but there's professional thieves out there stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars of shit every day. And it's because of them that they have to be so strict when someone like me steals, you know. So, so I'm not never, sorry I stole, but I am star sorry I got caught. So you've never, you've never done any drugs oh. ever? You've never nope, even, not, even I'm, tried? I'm not, unfortunately, I'm not cool. I can't say I did drugs. You know, a lot of rock stars say, yeah, I'm a rock star. You know, if I really wanted the rock star image, I'd be up in here telling you that I smoke drugs and put cocaine up my nose and... I put cocaine on my cornflakes. In fact, I'm going to meet my connection now. So, you know, I mean, I should lie and say I do drugs because it would like make me look like a badass. But then there's kids out there. They might look up to me and they say, well, if you use heroin and meth, I can do it too. So, you know, I, I don't put that shit in there. First of all, it's nasty. Two, I have health problems and I don't want to feel worse than I already do. It's a waste of money. If I have money, 20 bucks to spend on drugs, I'm going to go buy a comic book with it or food, a fucking beef sandwich, french fries, and hot dog and cheeseburger. I ain't going to waste it on no damn crack rock. A good cheeseburger and french fries, that's my drug. <laughs> I'm so a when, jughead from the Archie <clears throat> Comics. <laughs> so when do you meet the, um, when do you meet the, uh, the, the guy that you married? You mean married, quote unquote? Or, I met yeah. him in 2000, 2014 in Chicago at the clothing swap. And then you moved in with and him. And he I was guess? wearing this guy was four foot six when I met him, and now he's only about five foot six. He shrunk. I should be saying she, because she goes by the female gender. She's transgender, male to female. So when I met her, she was wearing these fucking high heels, a fucking women's get up, a fucking wig. I mean. And it didn't even look right like it usually doesn't with a lot of older transgender because she's 60 years old today. And so you, you understand. You weren't, uh, you weren't transgender at that point, right? That, no, I, I met her because I started to be transgender. I wasn't oh, I, aware I of... I always heard about sex change and I never understood what that was. You know, I was so fucking naive. I it's kinda, it's still kind of like a... So, it's still kind of like a cisgender hetero relationship right like it's a man and a woman but you male, guys have female. it was a male female relationship male female relationship between yes and you were the man and they were the woman so so we wanted to be anyway but it's more like i grew up as a female so i still had the female submissive personality and my friend had the male dominant personality because she also comes from incredible wealth and money and her family's like in a 1% wealth bracket. Oh, yeah. And um, she's disabled, so she's like the poor person in the family, but she's still got the, the connections, the family and all that. So they didn't like that. We were living together. We did it in secret. And even and to this long... day, her mother's trying to get us from being friends. And how long were you married? Just nine months. And then, like, what caused you to leave that? situation well first of all being beaten abused and I, I had a caseworker luckily from a different agency who got me a voucher 
because um, they said they considered me a veteran, even though I was only in boot camp six weeks. And also because I was in a domestic violence situation. Those two reasons alone, at the timing, it just happened to be right. And I got a voucher to get a Section 8 to get a um, Section 8 is not regular government housing, by the way. Section 8 gives you a paper called a voucher and you can live. You could choose any landlord that participates. And now they're not supposed to discriminate at all. All landlords are supposed to participate, but they always try to find reasons around it because a lot of the voucher holders are on drugs or their kids or grandkids are. So a lot of landlords are reluctant, but my landlord, he, he liked me on the spot and I was able to find a private landlord. My credit's good, give the paperwork, inspection, rent determination, then you get your apartment. So you see me inside, you see my apartment here, you see how nice it is, that's, that's section eight. You have a choice. If you're lucky enough to get a voucher, it's considered a golden ticket. Some people, they have to be on a lottery for decades before, if they even get lucky to get chosen. I think lottery systems are bullshit. I think when you apply for something, you should be able to put your name on a list and be chosen at a certain time. You know, not, not this choosing someone who just came that across the three months that they get out and then somebody else is waiting 10 years, you know, that's not fair really. They, they should make the system a little more fair.